active. You know, we've seen so many of the sit through a Zoom call or go do this worksheet. And if we can get students hands on with their learning and really interacting with the content, it can make a huge, huge difference. And so that's all of the ideas of, well, Gosh, that was awful. Let me try that again. That's exactly what we're going to try to do in this video is give you lots of ideas when it comes to making learning interactive and Pear Deck is a really good uh, solution for that. So the three of us here on this call are going to be joining you to share some ideas about using Pear Deck for remote learning. And so um, we're going to kind of swing it around here in the group and do some introductions. We'd also love to hear from you. If you're joining us live, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we're super excited to have you involved and want to make this all about you and include you in it too. So if you haven't already, drop your information into the chat to say hello, and we're going to be shouting some of you out. If you're watching this on the replay, we're glad that you found us and you're going to see lots and lots of practical ways that you can use Pear Deck to turn your slides from static, boring slides to interactive, amazing slides. So um, I'm going to kick it over real quick to my my left on your screen. It's to your right. Uh, Holly, you want to do a quick introduction? Hi, I'm Holly. I live in San Diego. Used to teach for 10 years in Chicago because I see some Midwesterners in the chat. Um, and super excited to be talking about Pear Deck today. Yes. Yeah, me too. And so without further ado, let's let's introduce Nick. Nick, do you want to tell everybody who you are and what you do real quick? Hey guys, I'm I'm Nick. I've, I've been at Pear Deck for quite some time now. If you know Pear Deck, you you, you likely know me uh, at, a, yep. at a conference or something over over the years. And we're right in the middle of virtual conference season now, so you might still be seeing a lot of me. But it's just through uh, webinars like this. Um, I'm coming uh, from 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 Kansas City, home of the Super Bowl champions, uh, and really uh, really excited to be here with. Uh, Holly and Matt. I've known both Holly and Matt for a long time now uh, through different uh, things. And, and I think this is probably the first time we've ever been in the same room, the same virtual room mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. So um, of course he had to get the, the Super Bowl <laughs> champions in there. If I, hey, next time the Colts win the Super Bowl, if they ever do again, I'm going to probably be doing that too. So, all right, let's see who's with us real quick. So we're going to say a quick hello to Louise from Texas. We've got Chris from Virginia. Kim is here from North Carolina, a regular in a lot of our videos. We've got Jeanette, who's here from North Carolina as well. Pam is here from Texas. Tan Tanya or Tanya? I don't know, uh, probably one of the two is here from Minnesota. It's good to have you here. Lori Ann is here from New Hampshire. Hello and welcome. We got Susan from Illinois right next door to me. Diane is here from Gillette, Wyoming. Good to see you. Les is here. He has two of his induction teachers with us Zoom wise this morning for PD. That's awesome. Love that. That's cool. Beth from New Jersey. Good to see you. Go, Maria. Go. Sorry. Yep. Yep. You got to say that whenever Chicago comes on. Sandra is here from Danville, Virginia. Tina is here from Pennsylvania. I was just emailing with Tina, I think. Uh, Darby is here and on and on and on. There's Tim. There's Angela. So we've got lots and lots of folks here. I'm going to keep throwing these up on the screen. But um, you're here really to listen to and learn about... Um, Pear Deck. And so, uh, Nick, do you want to give everybody just a real super fast overview, if they're not familiar with it, about what Pear Deck is? Yeah, let's let's start there. So um, we're on a mission to help teachers deliver powerful learning moments to every student every day. Um, so key word there is every student every day. And so we'll do a couple of metaphors to start us off. Uh, we look at the, the first classrooms and the first technology in classroom. And we've got, you know, the overhead projector. There was a single screen. It was a single screen environment. And then, you know, then we, we moved to introducing a lot of screens. Uh, and, and really what that did was it, it gave students the, the ability to go out and explore on their own. And I, and I included this because, you know, now more than ever, um, you know, we're all dispersed everywhere uh, uh, and, you know, could potentially be like lost at sea, you know, like, like we are here where everyone's all over the place with different technologies and their location. So what Pear Deck really uh, allows you to do with that technology 
is make it more engaging, make it more interactive so that we can all come together and connect and engage. And, you know, this is, uh, if you remember it or not, I know it was a long time ago, this is what the classroom used to look like before what? all of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you can see this idea of connecting all of these devices together. And and one thing that, that we've learned at, at Pear Deck is, is that Pear Deck can also be that great tool to keep students engaged and do what we do best in, in the classroom. Uh, but do that in the remote online learning environment as well. So that's that's what we're here to here to share. Excellent. All right. So um, so when it comes to um, when it comes to using Pear Deck, um, it it integrates really nicely with some of the tools that we're already using in the classroom, right, Nick? Yeah, so uh, great segue there. Um, I, I'm in a very familiar environment right now, which, which you guys are all probably familiar with, which is Google Slides. Um, but we did want to make sure that we were clear that um, you can do the same exact thing, add those same la layers of student engagement, interactivity, formative assessment to PowerPoint as well. So um, we have uh, an add in for, for PowerPoint and an add on for Google Slides, which is the, the main difference there. As far as some of the things within PowerPoint that you can take advantage of is that we do have an integration with Teams, uh, which which Holly and I were, were just gushing over before um, we got started today. So for all of you who are uh, familiar with Teams, uh, you can add Pear Deck as a tab within your classroom uh, to post lessons uh, directly within Teams so you never have to leave that, that screen. It's uh, but, so good. And you use it fluidly. So like when you want to use Pear Deck, you put it up in the tab and then you take it out of the tab when you're done. And it's just, oh, it's the mm -hmm. best part of Teams. The, the compliment to that with, with our friends with, with Google would be like sharing a lesson via Google Classroom. Um, you know, so there are just these different nuances to, to each tool. Uh, but the way that Matt uh, set it up was, was right is that Pear Deck works within the tools you already know. Um, yeah. And so use whatever you're most comfortable with, whatever your students are most comfortable with, whatever you were using in the physical classroom. I think that's probably like my number one, like best practice for remote learning, which is like use the tools that you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a great time to try new things right now and, and learn new things. Um, but, but like sticking with what works and you know what works is, is, is a great rule of thumb. And so I'm using what, what I uh, know works for me, which is, which is Google Slides. Yeah, that's fine. That yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I've got to say also that um, one of the things I love about Pear Deck is that sure you can take your slides and you can put interactive questions on top of them, <clears throat> but what it also allows us to do is to think about the way that we use slides in a completely different way. Because you see, a lot of times here's here's my take on it anyway is that we've used slides for a long time to show like these are the things I want to talk about. And so we put those bullet points up on slides. And who are those bullet points for? It's usually for the teacher or the person talking, right? So that they'll remember what to say. Pear Deck lets you design slides, not for the person who's talking, but the person who's doing the doing, the person who's doing the learning. And so you can design the slides thinking about what do you want the students to do instead of designing the slides for what do I want to say? And I think that's probably the biggest shift. And if we can go beyond, oh, these are my speaking slides, I'm going to put some questions on them. If we can go beyond that to what can I design within the slides for my students to do? I think when we do that, it's a huge shift in learning and it makes all the difference in the world. There, I'm off my soapbox. Well, Matt, let's let's stop talking about it and let's be about it. Let's, yeah. let's do it. Let's yeah. make a slide interactive. So yeah. before I mentioned that um, you get to choose how, how you want to use Pear Deck. And I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and, and log in with Google here for the Microsoft schools and districts out there, or those of you who just prefer PowerPoint. By all means, uh, stick mm -hmm. stick with PowerPoint. But I'm going to sign in using Google here, and then we're going to build out real quickly, just model out how you would take an existing lesson or activity, because we never want you to feel like you have to uh, reinvent the wheel or, or start from scratch. Just pull up a lesson or activity you've already been giving with or, or using and, and giving to students during this time of remote learning and make it interactive. So there's three steps to do that. The first step is to open up the add-on or add-in, which, whichever uh, you're using, PowerPoint or Google Slides, and just open that right up. And if you blinked, you missed it. That was step number one. 
everything I can do within Pear Deck is integrated right within PowerPoint or Google Slides. And I can use that add-on on the sidebar there, the right-hand portion of my screen, to do what Pear Deck does best, which is add engagement, add levels of student interactivity. So the easiest place to get started is our template library. So today we were going to start off with uh, with like a, a warm up question here. And so within this template library, there are hundreds of templates to choose from now at this point. So you really don't have to start from scratch. You can come in and maybe choose like a, a warm up or a bell ringer or end class with an exit ticket. And so we were gonna ask a, a warm up here of, of everyone who's joined us and we'll just select one of these templates from, from Pear Deck which is very broad, very high level. What do you wonder about today's topic? You know, obviously that's not subject area or grade level specific. That's a question that you could ask any group of kids regardless of, of what you're talking about. But if you keep that word template or, or prompt in mind, just know that you can always edit this to be whatever you want. So, you know, today we're talking about Pear Deck. So we could say, you know, what do you wonder about Pear Deck? Or we were gonna ask the group, you know, what. Um, what has been your biggest challenge? Moving to remote I'm just learning. Something pedagogical right now. One of the things that we often don't do with students is activate their curiosity before a unit. Matt. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we need to start activating curiosity, especially in a remote learning environment. If we're not doing that, we're missing the game. And if we just go into a lesson and we don't ask kids to wonder or, or think about some things, uh, we could really, really sh not get the results that we need. So... <laughs> <laughs> behind yeah. all of these, behind all these templates and prompts, we, we actually add some notes uh, into the presenter notes down here. And this is the pedagogy behind Pear Deck. So it's why would you use thinking broadly as a, as a warm up with students? So behind all of these cute illustrations is like the real, the real powerful, why would you actually do that and incorporate that? Um, let's do a little social emotional learning. So this has been by far uh, the most used templates of any that we offer during this time. Um, you know, for obvious reasons, like we could all probably like use a stress check right now or what's filling your bucket today and what's draining it. Uh, there are now more than ever uh, more stressors out there. Um, and, and some of the challenges of checking in with students uh, might be a little tougher now because you're not in that physical classroom to just be able to say, hey, how are you doing? And so to be able to just ask that, I'm seeing teachers actually just use this slide standalone as a standalone slide, just to do like a Monday morning check-in or like a, a Friday afternoon check-in, just to see how students are doing, you know, on this on this scale of I'm, I'm in a good space to I can't manage my emotions or behaviors right now, just to give students a voice to be able to, to hear from them. So before we launch the session, I want to do something very exciting. This is like by far the most folks who I'll be able to share this to as of, as of yet, which is a new feature that we just added uh, on, on Monday, so just a couple days ago, um, which was our number one feature request with this move to remote online learning, which is adding audio to slides. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. So keeping that connection with your students, having them be able to hear your voice, uh, being able to provide some additional instruction outside of what you said, Matt, making a slide that has 45 bullets and all it is is just talking points for you, the teacher, limiting that and being able to just audibly say that to students. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna model this real quick and then I'm gonna have everybody join in so then you can, you're gonna have to hear my voice twice, but I'll show you how easy this is. It's really actually really fun to do. I'm gonna add audio to this slide and before I would have like had to be on a live synchronous session to be able to do this where you guys could hear my voice and, and, and go along. But now we're gonna do this in student pace mode. Hi class, it's Nick, your teacher. I miss you guys so much. What I've done is I've built in a few templates for you to run through using Pear Deck. At some point this week, if you could go through the next five slides and give me some responses, I'd really appreciate it. Miss you guys, see you soon. There we go. And so now I'm gonna take uh, that audio. I can listen back to it to make sure it's, 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 it's what I want. And then I'm gonna add that right to the slide. So now when I flip my classroom and I turn it over to my students, asynchronous and student pace mode, slide by slide, they'll be able to go through and hear those instructions from me. 
I think just as important as hearing the actual instructions and content of the site itself is it's just actually hearing that voice too at the, at the same time. So mm -hmm. very, very excited to, to, to be adding that to, to Pear Deck. Again, number one feature request. So it's been really fun to work really hard and really fast over the last couple of weeks to, to, make, that, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So before we before we before we do it before we launch this, uh, Holly, Matt, anything you want to add or any any questions you have before we before we begin? Yeah, there's been a couple of things coming through in the comments, which is amazing. First of all, there's been a lot of there's a lot of this. <laughs> this is really cool. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I can't wait to use this feature. So the audio thing has been blowing up here in the comments. Check this one out. I had to call this one out real fast. Yeah. Dalton says, I love the new audio to, uh, to slides. I added directions to my Pear Deck and even added Star Wars theme music for my Pear Deck for Monday, which is, of course, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Amazing. Yeah. I like Dalton. I don't know Dalton, but he's my kind of teacher. You'll yes. have to share that with all of us, Dalton. Yeah, and then there was one more thing I wanted to share also, um, which had to do with um, slide themes. So um, someone asked, here it was, it was Les that asked it. He says, Slides Mania has great slide templates that you can modify for free. Has anyone used their templates? They would work really well for Pear Deck. And there's a variety of places where you can get some of these free slide templates that could work well with this. I mean, you've got Slides Mania, you've got Slides Carnival. There's a whole bunch of them. But of course, as Nick was showing us too, you've got all of those templates that are built in that you can modify. They're already built into the add-on or the add-in from Pear Deck. So if you want to start with one of those, um, you know, one of those themes or templates from one of those other sites, that's great. But you could also pull some of the pre-created templates in um, from the add-on, or you could really just build the whole thing out of those pre-created templates. Whatever's easier for, for, for you, the teacher, whatever's best for, for the student. Um, and, and Slides Mania is awesome. Like, uh, plug for them, they're, they're great. And if you did bring in some slides that were static and non-interactive, you do not have to use our template. So, so if you wanna take an existing slide and make it a multiple choice slide, right below the templates, you could take this slide and turn this into say like a multiple choice slide, for example. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, shout out to like Amanda Sandoval. She does a lot of the great uh, uh, templates out of Google Slides. And then when you add Pear Deck to that in Google Slides or PowerPoint and you share it, Pear Deck will always follow that along with it. So you could post that uh, and share that with your department and team drive or OneDrive or whatever that is and all that interactivity will, will stay out. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? Should we, should we dive in? No, I don't think they want to do that. Okay. I'm just kidding. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm excited okay. about this. Let's do it. So three steps. We've opened the add-on or add-in. We've, we've added interactive slides. It takes five or 10 minutes to do that. And then the final step here is to present lesson or start lesson with Pear Deck. So the big green button up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, this is when things get a lot different and, and is really exciting for remote learning because you're gonna choose your lesson mode. If you think about the traditional presentation tools, everything is always instructor pace for the most part. It's the same slide deck every single time. Every single time you give it, nothing changes. But with Pear Deck, we're gonna ask you, how do you want to set up this activity? What mode do you want this to be in? Do you want this to be in student pace mode where you're going to allow students to go through at their own pace asynchronously? So before all of this craziness, this was like for us, you know, like homework mode, like assigning homework. And so we had teachers that were using that and sharing it with students that were absent. Well, now overwhelmingly teachers are using Pear Deck and student pace mode for asynchronous learning. Um, because not all students can get on a Zoom call at the same time. Not all students have access to internet and technology at all times. So allowing your students to go through at your own pace, we're seeing tons and tons of teachers use, use this. When you do this, you get a link. And when you get that link, you can share that within Google Classroom. You can share that right within Microsoft Teams. You can post that to whatever LMS you're using. You can email it to students as well. And when they get that, then they'll be invited to the lesson or the activity that you've built and they can run through it. And maybe they have the full day to do that or maybe they have the whole week. Now, because I have everybody's attention here and I'll, I'll take advantage of that, we'll do this in instructor pace mode, but this is also a, a good time to like model a best practice, which is you can start Pear Deck in instructor pace mode for live real time synchronous learning. So if you're doing um, like a Zoom or, or a Google Meet, like we are right now, you can do that and then you can always change it later. So you could go through synchronously with the students that you can could get on a video call together. 
And then for those who can't, you can flip your classroom, turn it over to student pace mode and share that with students that weren't able to join that call for whatever reason. And then they can still go through it and have a, have a very similar experience uh, that the rest of the students had. So for those of you who have, have used Pear Deck before, you're already probably way ahead of me and, and you're getting ready to sign in. Um, Matt, Holly, I'll have, have you guys jump in for sure. Um, but I'm gonna have everybody go to joinpd.com and I'm actually gonna I'm actually gonna model this as well. So I'm gonna be showing both my screen as the teacher, um, but then also a student screen here. So for those of you who are uh, joining us later, not live, you can do the same thing and see what this will look like for you. Hey, while you're loading this up, let me bring this up and make sure that we've got it addressed. There was a question about. Let me find it real fast. Can students do the student paced activity on any device? This is something that's device agnostic, right, Nick? We need a website, but oh, do we lose Nick? I don't so know. We're talking about Kansas City Chiefs right now. Yeah, <laughs> there it's right. Yeah. Either that or he's sitting very still, one of the two. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna try to answer that question for Nick and say that. Yes, I'm pretty sure that it is because I've accessed it from my cell phone, from a laptop, from a Chromebook, for whatever. And that's kind of the beauty of the way that Pear Deck runs is if you're doing a live one like he was trying to run here, or if um, you're doing a pre or if you're doing a student paced one, either way, students can access it from any device, which is good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove. Nick from this in hopes that maybe he's able to come back. And I'm going to answer hope. questions that came through. Someone asked why yeah. Pear Deck. And for me, I'll just give Holly Clark's answer. Um, Pear Deck allows me to have that interactivity that I might not have, and I can check for understanding along the way. And so um, a lot of people ask the question, what's the difference between Pear Deck and Nearpod? Uh, we had that question earlier. Yeah, I'm glad you're talking about this. Okay. So uh, everyone has a different answer. For me, um, Pear Deck's not as structured. So in, in Nearpod, you're making an activity that kids follow along with. And Nearpod is really um, just a, a bit different in terms of, for me, the interactivity and the ability for it not to be in this like thing that um, the kids are kind of locked in. I could have that wrong and I would love other people to answer the mm -hmm. question. And, and you may have an answer that's different and Nick might as well, but I'd love people to talk about that in the chat. Yeah. Nick, see, while you were gone, we were talking about the competition. I, I know what happened when I left. No. <laughs> uh, that's right. Um, that's the number uh, one question I get. The number yeah. one. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I just did a quick refresh here, and it and it looks like we are we are up and running and good and get, good to go. And and I can and I can see that, um, like I said, a lot of you who are already using uh, Pear Deck have have already uh, joined in and, and signed right in here. So I've got uh, my twenty students that are joined in. So uh, let's just let's just go ahead and model at least the two questions that we built together, so so you guys can can see that and what that'll look like from the student side of things. And so we asked, we used that template question. And then we edited that to just say, you know, what has been your biggest challenge to remote, uh, moving to remote learning? So keep in mind that I'm also modeling the student view here on the right hand portion of my screen. So for the first time as a student, then I'm asked to answer a question and then I get a text box to be able to respond. And then that's when I can say, you know, I'm missing my students faces. So as the student, then I can respond. And as the teacher, then I can show responses as those are coming in. Um, what was the address again? The PD one? Yeah. Um, let me share that here. At any point, you can always uh, show or hide responses to pull that code out. And then even if it is in uh, instructor paste mode, you can share a link as well. So it's FQ. B E O for anyone who might be joining us late, you can see that. And then also what we, uh, what we talked about, uh, Matt and Holly and I talked about is that after this session, we're going to turn this into uh, student pace mode so that if you're joining us late, uh, you can join in as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. 
kind of pause there because you guys were frozen on my screen. And so I didn't know if it was uh, me or you guys. So I'm glad I didn't make some <laughs> ugly face thinking that it was that it was me. So as my students are responding, then I can see in, in real time those responses coming in. I know my exact level of student engagement here. So I have 43 out of, out of 50 responses. And these are always anonymous to the classroom. So these are always anonymous to your students. So hopefully what that's gonna do is that's gonna increase student engagement. It's gonna create a safe environment where students feel like they can participate without putting, out putting their name on something and interact. Now the superpower of Pear Deck, and for those of you who have used it before, is your teacher dashboard. And um, I, I, I think I've heard you all say this as well. Uh, it, every, every time you see three little dots, that's, that's where all the good stuff is. Always good stuff behind three little dots. And, and that's where you can open up your, your teacher uh, dashboard in a new window or new device. And so what my dashboard tells me is not just how students are, are participating, so not just those anonymous responses that I'm showing in front of the room, um, but also individual students' names based on, on them signing in. Mm -hmm. So let's jump ahead to our, our stress check and then we'll we'll show we'll show that we'll show that dashboard. And what Nick was just talking about there, when you put the the responses like he's got up there and they're anonymous, this is really nice, especially when you are face to face or if you're doing one of these on a Zoom call, because it does mean that students get a little bit of that anonymity. They can put their answers up there. They don't have to, you know, feel like anybody's going to make fun of what they said. But of course, the teacher, you know, as the teacher, we want to go back and see what everybody said. You know, a lot of us want to be, you know, want to have that way of knowing if somebody said something inappropriate, what they said, or, or I'm sorry, who said it, or we want to be able to know, you know, exactly who said what, so we can use it as an assessment tool. And you can obviously do that through the teacher dashboard and through your, your Pear Deck account. And I wouldn't be Holly Clark if I didn't bring up the metacognition of seeing other kids' responses and then comparing that. Like you think, oh, I responded this way, but I see other kids are responding like that. You're in a state of thinking about thinking and you're in a state of metacognition. And so that is so important. Uh, let's just let's just go ahead and, and show this right now. Um, exactly what, what we were just talking about, visualizing that, that learning. Um, but also being able to see the data behind that. And so I did go ahead and, and lock your screens as students. And at that point, that's when all the heads in the classroom pop up and say, you know, hey, how do you, how do, you do that? How'd she do that? And so on our stress check, I'm able to see, you know, hey, we've got, we've got uh, Nick Park over here who is, who is very stressed out. Now, Nick Park didn't have to shout that out in front of his peers. Um, he was able to answer that anonymously via Pear Deck. And so you can see your whole spectrum of, of students and, and how they're feeling. And the same goes for those written responses uh, from, from before. So when you guys were typing in responses, I, I was being sneaky. And, and as the teacher behind the scenes, I was seeing those as they were, were coming in. So I can see Barb, Suzanne, Sarah, Diane, and all of those responses. And all of this is pulled just simply off your students signing in using their email address. So they don't have to like create a username or download anything or remember a password. This is all just based right off of their Google or Microsoft domain, however uh, you choose to have them sign in. So what do you think? We have time for uh, maybe just uh, a little bit in uh, student paste mode? Yeah. Oh yeah, I think that's, that's a, that's a, no brainer. Yeah. Let's definitely talk about student pace mode. Cause for me, see, I, I think whenever you do a pair deck, um, like this, and if you did one live over like a zoom call or a Google meet call or a Skype or whatever, um, this is cool, but it also is synchronous, which means that everybody has to be there. And during remote learning, there's a million different things going on that can, you know, that can cause students not to be able to be in the physical space or in the digital space that they need to be. And so asynchronous, I think, is really the way to go when they can just access it whenever. And that's 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 why I'm thrilled that you're going to talk about this. Amazing. All right. So remember before I launched this in instructor pace live and you can toggle that anytime throughout the lesson. So that's down behind those three little dots where all the good stuff is. And that's where I can turn on student pace mode. So when I do this and I'm, I'm going to do this in a second, then now as students on the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you guys can move through the lesson at, at your own pace. Now, I could also just share this link with you on, on that LMS, whatever, whatever LMS you're using on your classroom website, whatever. 
But if you remember, what I wanted to do was I, I wanted to get everyone to this slide because this is just exciting for me. And, and the first time I'm able to, to share this with, with such a large audience is, is, is giving you those instructions now directly to all of our students who have joined in. And so again, we're gonna share this link after uh, the webinar so that everyone can go through the full lesson at their own pace. We're skipping around a ton. There's a lot of good stuff hidden in here, so you can go look at that later. And I will keep it in student pace mode for the foreseeable future. So if you stumble upon this uh, webinar in the future, you'll be able to do it. Um, but on this screen now, guys, so if you could, on, on, on your end as students, if you could use your little arrows at the bottom left-hand corner to toggle the screens, go ahead and run to slide uh, 20. So go to slide 20, which is the slide that I'm sharing right here. And on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen now, as students, you'll see uh, some headphones, a uh, little headphones icon, where you can press play to hear me giving you the instructions to move through the rest of the lesson, which you saw me build uh, about 10 minutes ago. Now, one of the trade-offs, I think, for flipping your classroom, which obviously there's advantages to flipping your classroom, uh, one of the trade-offs is, is that you might lose some of those real-time insights. So you might lose like actually visibly seeing a student struggle through uh, a, a question or seeing the entire class breeze through an example. Because you have that dashboard within Pear Deck, even though it's in student paste mode, the dashboard is still live. The dashboard is still real-time. So, so take a look at this. This is this is pretty cool. I didn't really have this realization with Pear Deck until this remote online learning shift that we've all had, is that regardless of where we are in the world, even if we're not in that that physical classroom, I can see in real time. Like for instance, on this slide, we've got Angela, Dalton, and Aisha. She got scared and ran away before I called her out. But I can see those three students now. I can see that the majority of our students are still on slide 20, probably listening to my voice uh, doubly here. Um, but I can see those students and not only just see who's on those slides, but see their responses as they come in. So that trade-off of having a lag in seeing student data and responses isn't there even when they're in their own pace. So like what I'm seeing on Twitter a lot is teachers that are just like, amazed that like, you know, I'm in the comfort of my own home, all of my 30 students are spread out all over the place. And just like I'm showing here on my screen, we're seeing as you're doing all that work. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have a lot of fun looking through this uh, over the next couple of weeks, as we probably see hundreds of students start to come in and play around and see how they're doing. And then I'll follow up with everyone individually and, and, and criticize you for uh, your, your work. No, I'm kidding. This will not, this will not be graded, uh, but this will just give you uh, some time to get in and, and play around with it to see what it would look like from the student side. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Very good. Wow. My goodness. We have covered a lot of stuff when it comes to, to this. And so Nick, um, I know you've kind of touched on this all throughout, but as far as remote learning goes, um, there's kind of a couple of ways you've got the student pace mode, which you just showed. And then you've also got the, um, the ability to do one of these uh, Pear Deck presentations on a live video call. Are those the two like most common ways that people are using Pear Deck for remote learning right now? It, absolutely. So it's either it's either live for uh, video uh, instruction, video conferencing to, to do that live, um, or it would be uh, student paced where you could share that um, after after the fact. And I, I would plug again the adding of audio um, when, if and when you can, or if and when it would be valuable for your your students to include that, so they still get that feel of live instruction. It's just yeah. a la carte, uh, and it's at their at their own pace. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. we got a couple of questions coming in. Let me throw some of these onto the screen real fast. One was, how do you get feedback as a student if you're working alone? I think you just touched on that a little bit, Nick, didn't you? Yeah. So that would be um, from your teacher dashboard. You can see those responses uh, live, but also every response that comes in with, with Pear Deck. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm putting a, a quote on, on my screen uh, so, so you, can, you can see it. Um, the way that it's referred to here is a, a, a deeper insight. And, and I just realized that you all are, are having way too much fun in, in student paced mode uh, off on off on your own adventure. So I'll turn that around and, and get everybody's attention here, which is a nice, a nice classroom management tool to, to have. Um, 
every single time you ask your question within Pear Deck, it does become a data point you have moving forward as well. So after a session, you can go into your account to see individual student responses. You can look at those in, in a couple of different ways. You can look at those in the, in the dashboard and in, in our environment, you can see those in, in Google Docs, Google Sheets, some of those tools as well. Um, and then it would just be, you know, up to you as far as like following up with those students, whether you want to do that, like in real time using Microsoft Teams and, and Messenger or like after the, the lesson is due and maybe email students, uh, you know, to clarify some responses or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's the next question. Will it give me a report later if I'm not live? Yes. So you, uh, you do not need to, we've had a lot of questions about this and it totally makes sense. Like, I think a lot of people are really nervous to like exit out of the screen because it's like, mm -hmm. you know, what ha does it turn off? What happens? Pear Deck is always going to be live un until you end it. Um, so you can always keep a session open and live and exit out and log out of your computer. It will always be live until you end it. And even when you do end that session, you can go back and, and reopen it as, as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can monitor that progress. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of teachers right now. And, and, and Matt, you, you had said like build out a lesson. What I'm seeing a lot of teachers right now use Pear Deck for is just like an activity. So like yeah. sh that shifting that thinking from like, I need a 30 slide deck to like bite sized, go through these throughout the week when you get a chance. Mm -hmm. So you can see all that coming in Monday through Friday. And then if it's due on Friday, then you can end that. And then you'll have the data after the fact as well. Yep. Yep. Um, here's a quick one um, that I bet, Nick, you can probably point us towards some resources on. Here we go. Chris asks, do you have any Pear Deck tutorial videos? There are some videos out there somewhere, right? I think Matt might have some of his own out there. Uh Shameless That's true for Matt. Um, so we have a, a lot of resources right now. And, and, and actually right now, um, just because of, of, of the need that's out there, we're, we're offering like uh, roughly about 10 live daily webinars where there's a member of our team on the, on the other end. Um, I'm running a five o'clock central webinar today uh, that is Pear Deck for Remote Learning. So if you want to come join there, um, but that would just be right on our homepage under, under resources check out training and also help videos. And I'm sure that we can share this out with the, the group uh, later. Uh, the help videos are, are fantastic. Don't, don't be intimidated, intimidated by the number uh, because these are all two to three minutes each. Uh, so they're very much bite-sized right. resources to get started. And then um, everyone will appreciate this. They are separated between videos for Google schools and videos for Microsoft schools. So Excellent. there isn't much of a difference between the two, but we do separate those so, so that you can choose whichever one you're most uh, familiar and comfortable with. And then as far as those trainings go, uh, keep, keep an eye on these trainings um, because you would have like found out about today's training on this page and then also all of the daily webinars uh that that we offer as as well but um you can see like eric kurtz uh next week doing a, a custom mm -hmm. webinar for us excellent very good very good uh let's see if we've got any other questions okay so here was this question um and it had to do with the teacher dashboard and so diane asked are all the teacher dashboard features you're showing us free so right now, uh, free uh, Pear Deck is free for all educators uh, through the remainder of the school year. So there is nothing you actually could pay for within Pear Deck, even if you wanted to. Uh, to take advantage of it, uh, you just go to PearDeck.com and you just simply log in. Uh, you don't have to apply for it or anything. You just log in and you'll instantly be upgraded to the paid premium version. Now we're offering that through the end of the school year just because of the, uh, the scenario we're in right now. Um, moving forward past that, the dashboard is a, a paid premium feature. So the dashboard in general is, is a paid feature that you would need to have access to. Um, but what I would just say kind of as a blanket statement to the full group is that we partner with schools and districts to support subscriptions. So don't like at an individual teacher level, you know, don't be too worried about, you know, what's this going to cost me or, or how do I upgrade or things like that. We really will work with the schools and districts to, to support a subscription for everyone. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right. Very good. And another tips and tricks coming mm -hmm. forward. So maybe we should talk about that. And mm -hmm. I in the thing that we're going to have a post coming up. And so 
Uh, do you want me to talk about it? So, uh, sure. So Matt and I plan <laughs> uh, to have a tips and tricks, like uh, how do you use this in the classroom pedagogically, which is everything mm -hmm. Nick is talking about. We're just going to come up with some ideas, answer some questions, and we will be, uh, Matt will be posting that on his YouTube. So if you have subscribed, you'll get a notification that it's coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And then, yeah, we'll we've um, we'll continue to either add new information or update existing information we've got about Pear Deck on our blogs. Uh, Holly and I both will. So I'll go ahead and put that down at the bottom of the screen here in a second so that you can get signed up for that. But I'm not seeing, I think we've got maybe one more question that I'll put up here real fast. And then we will wrap this up. Here's one. In Pear Deck, if you edit a slide for student paste, do you have to share a new link to the students? Because in Nearpod, you have to give the students a new code every time you edit some info. Nick, what do you think? You do, um, but don't think of that as like a, a bad thing. Um, it, it's actually a good thing because every time you launch a session, so within Pear Deck, think of your lesson as that Google slide, as that PowerPoint. When you launch a presentation, when you click start with Pear Deck like we did today, it creates a unique session for who you're going to be assigning that to. Um, so it's actually advantageous to have those broken out into different uh, sessions. If uh, it, Pear Deck is easier from the standpoint of if you need to edit something, as soon as you end your session, you're gonna be dropped right back into Google Slides. And so if it's just like a typo or, or something that you wanna add, it makes it really easy because you're not like uploading Pear Deck to like another platform and you're not able to edit it. Everything you do within Pear Deck is always yours. So it's always your content, it's always your data and it's saved and stored in your Google Drive or your OneDrive so that you can access that later. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Well, we've covered an awful lot of ground in this video. This has been fantastic. And everybody's questions and comments and your own ideas have been fantastic. So thank you all so much for joining. Um, Nick, do you have any parting shots or anything to share with us before we finish? The last thing I'll say is I'm turning this deck into student paced mode. So for those of you who are with us right now, uh, you can go through the entire session that we put together because we really skipped uh, around a lot. And then we'll also share this link out for the folks who are joining us later to be able to go back in uh, and experience at any point. Uh, the only uh, thing I'd add is just a, a big thank you and, and not just for joining today, but for all everyone's doing right now as we all like figure this new reality out. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully Pear Deck can play a small part in keeping your students connected over the next couple of weeks uh, in remote learning. Yeah. yeah, can I say something? I just want to say a shout out to the people who come to these, like yeah. who comes every time. They make it like worthwhile and engaging. And I just want to give you my appreciation for your mm -hmm. quest for learning. And you make this what it is. Yes. So thank you. Yeah, no, Holly's exactly right. If you're here listening to this live or if you're watching this in the replay, we're going to lump you in with this as well, that we get the best questions and the best ideas to share. And that's why we love doing these videos, because we really do feel like this is us and you all together. We're all better together. And when we all work together to share ideas, everybody benefits. So thank you so much for joining. So one more time, Nick Park, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. All right. And thank you also for watching the video, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it on the replay. And of course, if you want more videos just like this, make sure that you subscribe to the Ditch That Textbook YouTube channel or follow uh, Infused Classroom on Facebook or Ditch That Textbook on Facebook. Any of that will get you more of this stuff. So thank you so much for joining. We will see you on the next video.